approximately 15,000 years ago, a wall of water more than 750 meters or 2,460 feet in height raced across a section of southern Russia. As this flood quickly overtopped the natural boundaries of river channels, it began depositing house-sized boulders on cliffs and creating giant ripples in the landscape. Traveling at first to the west and then to the north, billions of trees and plants were swept away and bars of gravel were in place which reached up to 400 feet thick. As this flood progressed along the Katoon River, it reached speeds of up to 90 miles per hour or 144.8 kilometers per hour. Much like pouring water down a small hill of sand, this mega flood quickly carved away dozens or even hundreds of meters thick of rock in some locations. After all, at its peak, this flood had a discharge rate of more than 10 million cubic meters per second, a rate which was more than 8 times the combined discharge rate of every single river on the planet. As this glacial outburst mega flood continued, it reached what is today the city of Novobirsk six and a half hours later. At the 11 hour mark, the flood waters, now at a lesser height, reached the far north of the continent, entering a supermassive glacial lake known as the West Siberian Glacial Lake. This lake encompassed more than a million square kilometers at its peak, covering 4.8 times the area of the combined Great Lakes, or, for a more local comparison, covering 31% more area than the combined Black Sea, Caspian Sea, and Aral Sea. As the floodwaters entered this vast body of water, they raised sections of its edge temporarily by a dozen meters. This caused the floodwaters, albeit now only a minimal height of a few meters, to surge to the south, reaching the Aral Sea at hour 27 and the Caspian Sea at hour 35. By the time these waters reached the Black Sea 48 hours later, they had traveled a total of 6,900 kilometers or 4,287 miles. Large sections of the lakes and seas the megaflood touched temporarily turned a cloudy brown due to the extensive sediment it emplaced. What had just occurred was one of the Altai floods, which had a dramatic impact in the landscapes of large swaths of Russia, along with lesser effects to those in four other countries. And yet, what I just described was not merely a one-off event. Although estimates do vary, what I just described occurred at least five times between 28,000 and 15,000 years ago. So, how did these floods occur? Where did all this water originate from? This video will answer these questions and discuss this repeating Ice Age era natural disaster. Approximately 28,000 years ago, Earth was in the midst of an ice age as average world temperatures were 5 Celsius or 41 degrees Fahrenheit instead of the 15 Celsius or 59 Fahrenheit it averages today. As a result, large ice sheets and glaciers developed across far northern and southern latitudes reaching multiple kilometers thick in both northern Siberia and a region known today as the Altai Republic on the border with Mongolia, China, and Kazakhstan. Since two closely spaced mountain ranges were present, when portions of the adjacent ice sheets on them melted, they filled up two valleys with substantial water reaching 600 cubic kilometers in volume at one point. These glacial lakes were held up by a kilometer-thick lobe of glacial ice at a spot 18 kilometers west of the town of Kurai. Over 2,600 years, this lake became increasingly deep, eventually reaching up to 750 meters depth in some sections. Small amounts of this lake water eventually began to escape through cracks in the ice dam. Over time, friction from water flowing through these cracks created heat, which further expanded these to become fissures, thus allowing even more heat to be generated as additional water flowed through. This feedback loop continued until the ice could no longer support the pressure behind it, causing a catastrophic collapse to occur. This process repeated multiple times, somewhat like Washington State's Missoula floods, forever changing the landscape for hundreds of kilometers.